A lot of people who overbreathe have some sleeping problems. They have insomnia or some elements of it. Insomnia very often follows hyperventilation. And from the point of view of Konstantin Buteyka, it is one of defense mechanisms as well. Why? It's because when we sleep, we often, when people sleep, they often breathe through their mouth, and also their metabolism is passive. As a result of it, the level of carbon dioxide in their lungs goes down rather fast. And often the body, our friend, needs to come up with a defense mechanism, with a solution to prevent this rather dangerous situation. Remember that overbreathing or hyperventilation could be lethal. It's very dangerous. So the human body will do anything it can to stop it. And there are many, many defense mechanisms the body developed over a very long period of time to protect the lives, our lives. All right. So insomnia is one of the defense mechanisms. When we hyperventilate, it's rather dangerous. And in this case, the body most likely will wake us up. Because when we awake, we could maintain certain control of our breathing. Besides that, sometimes we feel rather restless when we wake up and we feel like, you know, doing something because we cannot sleep. So a person might just walk from a bedroom to a kitchen to get a glass of water. Still, it's moving. Still, it makes metabolism more active and it starts producing more carbon dioxide. The level of carbon dioxide in the lungs goes up and the situation becomes less dangerous. So, sometimes insomnia is a very good thing. <laughs> I like to say that I pray to have insomnia. I think it's wonderful to sleep less. I think it's uh, really great when you have some extra hours during the night, which you could use um, constructively. So insomnia is really not such a bad uh, thing. And sometimes people suffer from insomnia because they're totally convinced that they have to sleep at least eight hours a day or even more in order to be healthy. Well, uh, Konstantin Buteyko was totally against this stereotype. It is very true that a person who overbreathes, hyperventilate, needs eight hours or even more to get rested. However, if your breathing is closer to the norm established by Konstantin Pavlovich, that, then your body becomes much more efficient. It stops wasting, constantly wasting its own energy. And in this case, you don't need that much time uh, to rest. So normally, when people modify their breathing, and start breathing less, their sleeping patterns change. Their bodies start require, requiring less and less sleep. For example, uh, Ludmila Buteyka sleeps just for three hours every night, and it's totally enough for her. I used to sleep for eight or nine hours, uh, uh, you know, before, I would say that eight hours of sleep is enough for me, but really nine or ten, I, I would say, would, uh, were really, was really enough. And now, you know, often I sleep just for five or six hours, and it's totally sufficient. 
So my body requires less sleep right now because I waste my energy less. My body is functioning in a more efficient way. And this is a wonderful benefit of the breathing normalization uh, program. Constantine's uh, positive maximum pose was very high. It was actually more than three minutes. And his body required very little sleep. So he was known for sleeping approximately four times during the day and night. And every time he would rest for approximately 15 minutes. He wouldn't even lay in the bed. He would just sit in his um, favorite chair. And that was totally enough for his body to accumulate energy. And he was able to spend the whole night uh, doing his research, writing his manuscripts, and working on the, develop, uh, developing, the development sorry, of his method. So sometimes our students, our clients, tell us, well, I would like to apply the breathing normalization method However, I'm a busy person, and I really don't have time for breathing exercises. Well, the breathing normalization method will create time for you. Just start applying it by making your body more efficient. You will gain a lot of time. You will gain a lot of you will gain extra hours, which you used to spent on sleeping, you will stop having seasonal colds and flu, seasonal health issues. You will gain a lot of time from that. Uh, you will be able to be more awake, more active during, and more energetic during the day. So that will also give you some time. And um, if you have any serious health issues, most likely they will um, get diminished, reduced, or even um, eliminated. So that will also give you a lot of functional time. So start applying this method and you will add some hours to your active life. So some people are take sleeping pills in order to force themselves to sleep peacefully at least eight hours per night. Well, by doing that, we remove the defense mechanism which stops over breathing. From my point of view, it's much more constructive and much more positive to remove hyperventilation over breathing which will let you sleep peacefully and it will also allow you to spend less time for rest. So it's all choices, choices we make. And of course some people cannot sleep peacefully because of their breathing difficulties. It doesn't matter what is the reason which prevents you from sleeping the whole night. Um, if you cannot sleep, use the night time in order to improve your breathing and health. So the night time is um, a wonderful time to do breathing exercises. I showed you some exercises uh, yesterday and today I'm going to introduce the new ones to you. So, you know, it's quiet at night time. Most likely you are not disturbed. So use this time to improve your breathing. Some people with breathing difficulties 
need to wake themselves up in order to prevent, um, let's say, an asthma attack. I remember that Ludmila Buteka told us that when her asthma was severe, she had to set up her alarm clock to wake herself um, every two hours during the night. She would wake up and do some breathing exercises, or at least she would look at her breathing and modify it, make it shallower, make it gentler, stop mouth breathing. And that would prevent very serious breathing difficulties, which often happen in the morning. So please um, keep it in mind, and if you have serious breathing difficulties, you might need to wake yourself up if your body doesn't do it naturally in order to improve your breathing and prevent serious trouble.